I can't even think about all of the shit I did to fit in. Pass hard to watch like a fucking scary movie. I'm always happy to meet somebody that never knew me. Change for the better, hope niggas are living through me. I put it all on the wax so the people can know the true me. Hard to remain sane when the people you love the most is what's causing the damn pain. Y'all beat by the same thing. We ain't playing the same game. It's all for my fam name. She the girl of your fucking dreams, but to me she a plain Jane. You dip in ball, man. I duck when them calls came. This that higher level thinking. I'm the type to jump the fuck off for the shit before it's sinking. Not here for no new shit. My game slide to boost it. Ayy, I don't have to prove shit. Rockstar fight. The fool shit. My movie, this the new script. I want a life with no bullshit, nigga. I know on these news clips, that's why I dab him and move quick. Won't be around when they move switch, won't be around when they lose clips, won't be around for they lose lips. Might be the reason they pull shit. Yeah. Well, Dak, here's the deal. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence, and nobody can hang with my stuff. Uh, you know, I'm just a it's a big, hairy American winning machine. If you ain't first, you're last. Welcome, welcome. Yo, welcome back to another episode of Kicking It With Saint. I'm on my shit this week, bro. I'm on my shit. I'm getting these videos out. I'm doing the work ethic have to continue to go hard. But how are we doing today? How dope was the day, yo? I've been brainstorming a lot today, all right? Tomorrow is my long day. That's the day where I have to... It's a long work day, and I have to take a trip after work before I get back. But I plan on recording tomorrow night also. The grind cannot stop. When you do not have it, you have to grind like you do or you never will. Point blank, period. And first, some 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 shout outs and some announcements before we get into it. Um, I can't wait till I'm making a big time announcement one day like, yo, I got signed. I got a deal. I'm sponsored. Or yada, yada, yada. But listen, first off, I want to shout out everybody who watched the videos, who watched the show, who support, who share, like, subscribe, all that. I appreciate y'all greatly. I never say that enough or really at all because I just get into the show and I start going. But I do appreciate y'all. I really do. Um, before we get into the breakdown this week on the different games that happen and whatnot, Deontay Wilder, one of my favorite boxers of all time, is boxing on Saturday. I, I fuck with Deontay heavy. I don't know Deontay personally. Just everything that I hear him say, I hear him talk, how he talks, and the things that he does. And I love Deontay Wilder. I think that's a real cool dude. <clears throat> I'm wishing him nothing but success, joy, peace, and happiness. But I do hope he wins Saturday, which I'm confident he will. Uh, I cannot remember the name of the fighter he fighting, but uh, that does not matter. Uh, his return fight, though, is on Saturday. So we rooting for Deontay Wilder. Um, it was another uh, announcement that I was supposed to make. Oh, I'm, I'm about to start working on that Draymond Green video. Uh, the Draymond Green video is going to be up probably by the end of the week. Now, it's another announcement that I meant to make. Well, it's something else I meant to say before the video, and I can't even remember what it was, yo. Oh, I do remember what it was, yo. Shout out to the Phillies, my boy. Phillies, for one, we won in the wild card against the Cardinals. Shout out to uh, the machine, Albert Pujols. I don't know if Adam Wainwright retiring, but if he is, shout out to him. And uh, Yadier Molina, shout out to all three of them goats. Uh, but I am a Philly fan through and through. I told y'all I like the Phillies and the Dodgers because I grew up watching both teams. But the Phillies really had my heart growing up because it was even though my favorite player was playing for the Dodgers because and for the Red Sox because my favorite players growing up was Manny Manny Ramirez and um, David Ortiz. And then at now my favorite player is Mookie Betts. And Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper been my favorite player for a long time. He's been my favorite player longer than Mookie because he's been in the league longer than Mookie. But I've been a Mookie fan from the moment he stepped foot in the league till now. I would probably say Mookie is actually my favorite. And, and when I can see a player who look like me, my skin tone, grew up in a black family, who understand being an African-American man who was unapolog unapologetically black, 
like yeah it, it's gonna be very it's gonna be a bias there uh and when he is great as he is on top of that that's why i always go to war with motherfuckers when they say mike trout the best player in the league and i'm like nah he ain't though but shout out to mike trout too because that motherfucker is lit he had like 39 home runs this season or 40 home runs this motherfucker probably could have uh had a pace with Aaron Judge. Two players who got hurt in the beginning of the MLB season this year who probably could have had stupid seasons. Bryce Harper was on a crazy pace before he got hurt. And Mike Trout, looking at how he how his season ended, bro, if you give him those injured months he had back, Judge Trout and uh <clears throat> Judge Trout and um Bryce would have had insane home run seasons. Like insane. Mookie bets. <laughs> Mookie is the god. So, but it's MLB playoff month. Uh, the the my Phillies ended up winning. I'm hoping my Dodgers win tonight. I also like the dudes on the Padres, but I don't actually root for the Padres when they go up against the Dodgers. I don't really root for the Padres. I kind of do root for them a lot more now. Well, so here's the thing with the Padres, and I know it's a football show, but we got to get the baseball stuff out of the way because I watch baseball, and I love baseball. Um, I love Manny uh, Machado. I done been a Manny Machado fan since he was in Baltimore. So Manny Machado is one of my favorite baseball players all time. I'm always going to root. I've been a Manny Machado fan longer than I've been a Bryce Harper and a Mookie Betts fan. Straight up. And you want to know what's funny? Most of the players I root for always end up on the Dodgers somehow, some way. Manny Ramirez was a Dodger for a year. Not Manny Ramirez, Manny Machado. I I love Manny Machado. Like, if you didn't get to watch Manny Machado in his young years with the uh, o- o- Orioles, and um, I used to call, I used to, pr- bruh, the Orioles is the hardest name to pronounce because I used to pronounce them motherfuckers the Orioles. Now I figured out how to pronounce it, Orioles. I don't even like pronouncing the word now. I really like the way I used to pronounce it based off. But when I got to college, motherfuckers was trying to fix my speech so much. I'm telling you, every word I said, motherfuckers like, bro, what did you just say? That's not how you say that, bro. Listen, you said like, and I'm like, man, y'all motherfuckers is something else, bro. I, I, I went to college and I had this one country dude. If you ever been around somebody who like country, country, and they black, they the fun, and they like, unapologetically black like kind of like hood boogers too like and that's no offense bro like a white person say that that you might take offense now nah, I, I understand my peoples just know they 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 unapologetically black and they from the country but them some of the funniest motherfuckers they call shit preservatives bro what the fuck is a preservative bro i never had heard of a preservative a day in my life until i started hanging around black country uh Hood folks, bro. Them motherfuckers is hilarious. They smoke the dirtiest looking weed too, bro. But that shit do be getting you high. So, shout out to them. But uh, a couple of baseball things. Uh, Manny Machado, like I was saying though, I I love Manny Machado. But I'm not really a Padres fan. I do kind of feel like if I had a third team, because I officially no longer root for the uh, Red Sox. So the Red Sox used to be one of my favorite teams, but that's only because so many of my favorite players was playing for those teams. Poppy, Mookie, Manny, Pedro, um, Dustin Pedroia, Kevin Euclid. They had so many great, like, that's how you know I was watching that team back in the day. I can name, I can just rattle off so many players. But then I kind of, I kind of look at Boston, though, the, kind, the way I look at the Yankees, because I actually kind of rooted for the Yankees, too. Because I can name, they got a lot of the players I like growing Mariano, Derek Jeter is one of my favorite players all time. El Capitone, the captain. CC Sabathia, one of my favorite pitchers all time. Like, I can rattle off Mark Teixeira, A-Rod. Like, it's so many great Yankees. Nick Swisher, one of my favorite players I watched back in the day. Switch here in Fina. Like, I, I watched so much baseball back in the day. Like, the only reason the Phillies became, I'm trying to remember what made the Phillies my favorite team. I think it was because I used to play this baseball game on the computer with my homeboy, Kevin. Shout out him. And it was because I, the, Roy Holiday, I think my very first baseball player was Big Poppy and Manny Ramirez. No, it was Manny Ramirez. My My favorite pitcher, the first pitcher that I was like, yo, I like this motherfucker 
was Roy Halladay and Cliff Lee. It was Roy Holiday, then it was Cliff Lee. Cliff Lee, though, I hadn't watched him until he had got to Philadelphia. But I was watching Philadelphia also because I liked Ryan Howard, Jimmy Rollins, Jason Wirth, uh, Chase Utley, Shane Victorino, Pl- uh, Polanco. Like I, I, I was, I don't, I can't, I still to this day do not remember what exactly made me watch because I can remember what made me watch the Dodgers. I can remember what made me watch the Red Sox. I can remember what made me watch the Yankees. I cannot remember what made the Philadelphia Phillies the team that I actually claimed. It's just that I had an emotional connection with that team more than I did with any other team. I really think it's because my brother was a Yankee fan. Nah, but I was rooting for the Phillies before we even faced them that year. And the, uh, I can't tell you why the Phillies ended up being my favorite team in baseball, to be honest with you. Most years, I want to give up on them and uh, trade in uh, and officially make the Dodgers my team. But we went through this 11-year drought, and I was still rooting for them, so it really ain't no point in me hopping off the bandwagon. Plus, they got players that I actually love, like Bryce Harper, like I said, is my favorite player in baseball other than Mookie. I love Nicholas Castellanos. That, Castellanos is actually one of my favorite players in baseball, too. <clears throat> and Kyle Schwarber has become one of my favorite players in baseball this year. MLB The Show 22 made me a fan of Bryson Stott because I use him so much, and now I'm a fan of his. That's one of the reasons it's important to have video games with the sport that's uh, being played. That's why I said it's so important that Xbox finally made a deal to get MLB The Show on the Xbox because not having... I think it's not a coincidence that baseball fell off in a drought a couple years ago because there was no longer an Xbox game that you could play baseball on. Naturally, a lot of fans are going to move away from that because now, <clears throat> what's the point of watching it if I can't even play it? And it's, it's obviously it's going to be major fans or dudes who got a PS4 and all those. But I stopped watching baseball around the same time I could no longer play it on my Xbox. And I wasn't a kid who had both systems. My cousin had the other system, but he wasn't a baseball fan. <clears throat> And when we all was together, we played Madden in 2K. Baseball wasn't a game that was getting passed around in a black community when all, everybody came together. Even in college, people wasn't sitting around playing uh, tournaments on uh, MLB The Show. Or in, even at the time, ML, uh, 2K baseball. Like, those was just not big things. The biggest baseball, the only baseball game growing up, that me and my uh family and my homies played together was the bigs one and two. We played the shit out of those two games. And I don't know why they have not recreated that game. It's crazy, but playoff baseball is underway. The Phillies just took game one from the uh, Braves. Hey, I'm hoping the Phillies can go on a magical ride to the uh, championship. I'm not going to lie. I'm pulling for the Dodgers and the Phillies because I want Mookie to win a championship. <clears throat> And Clayton Kershaw, because Clayton Kershaw is like my favorite pitcher all the time. It's, it's, I didn't watch Clayton Kershaw from the moment he came to the big leagues. Clayton Kershaw is easily the greatest pitcher that I have ever seen with my own two eyes. And I love Roy Holiday. Roy Holiday, my favorite pitcher because he played for my favorite team. And also, Doc was the guy. But I have never. Like and I done seen some great pitchers, uh, Roy Halladay, Madison playoff, Madison Bungarner, uh, Tim Lincecum, Cliff Lee, Roy Oswalt, uh, AJ Brunette, CC Sabathia. I done watched a lot of great shit. Uh, Jose, uh, Juan Santana for the Mets, uh, Max Scherzer, Degrom. Degrom really don't compare to them dudes to me because he really haven't had the playoff success. But I've watched a lot. Matt Kane back in the day for the uh, Giants. Uh, I, I don't watch a lot of great pitching. Without a shadow of a doubt, the greatest pitcher that I have ever watched with my own two eyes is Clayton Kershaw. It's not even close. I understand people are going to try to bring up his playoff uh success but listen i cannot ignore what my eyes have seen 
Clayton Kershaw was the fucking man for so long, bro. It was ridiculous. Like, Mariano Rivera was the greatest closer I've ever seen. Like, hey, and shout out to the Mets, bro. Sucker ass motherfuckers. But listen, <clears throat> let's get into some football. So, week five, NFL season. Boy, was it a doozy. So, let's run through these scores real quick. The Seattle Seahawks and Geno Smith, I picked these motherfuckers to win, and of course, they lose. They head to the Big Easy. Oh, no, actually, it's not called the Big Easy. Is it called the Big Easy? Is that New York? Fuck it. I can't remember, but listen, they went to Louisiana to take on the New Orleans Saints, and they lost. And it's so weird that they lose this game because they still put up 32 fucking points. So when I picked them to win this game, they did exactly what I thought they was going to do. Geno had a good game. I was not wrong in thinking that Geno was going to continue his good season. The problem was the defense. The fucking defense is turning into Detroit's defense. We score a lot of points, but we're going to give up a lot of points defensively. So they give up 39 to a Saints team that I don't even think scored like more than 25 this season at some. Like, the Saints throw 39 on the board and they end up walking away with that dub. The Seahawks are an interesting team because not just because it's just, oh, they're interesting. Like, I'm not just saying that to say that. Because of how good this offense is, I'm very interested to see what they do against the Rams. Because the Rams are terrible offensively. Like, they can't do shit. They just got beat by Dallas. So, my fact, like, I can just go ahead and hop to that game while we're talking about this game. The Rams end up losing to Dallas 22-10. Uh, to 10. Now, the Rams' defense is not the problem. I, I've not thought the Rams' defense was the problem at any point in time. When you have an offense that's so bad, as bad as the Rams' offense has been this year, and the defense constantly got to be on the field, you have to expect that the opposing offense, if it's not as offensively challenged as your offense, they get paid to make plays too. Eventually, they will have to make a play on a defense that's continuously played all day and been out here far longer than the offense. So because of the Seahawks can put up points on the board right now, and listen, will it last? I got no clue, but they are playing consistent offensive football right now. They terrible defensively. But they have been great off. I think they had one off offensive game this year. Uh, other than that, they've been great offensively. So and listen, I don't think Geno is playing the cleanest of games that people actually think he playing uh, because the stats. If you look at his stats, it's like, oh, man, Geno balled out. But it still plays out there that I think Geno missed here and there. And I also think his decisions out there coaching wise that's stopping the Seattle Seahawks from really being a. a and plus, not only that, not only that, I do think that their defense is just an average defense. Like, I don't think, excuse me, I don't think their defense is like, oh, the worst in the NFL because they, you know, jacking up this many points on a weekly basis. But I don't think they special either. Like, Jamal Adams, I think, is sitting on a defense where I know he regret getting traded over there because he thought Russ was going to be there. People going to take shots at Jamal Adams. Uh, even though he was hurt. Uh, I don't even know if Jamal is back on the field yet. I couldn't even remember when I watched it. But Jamal Adams is a great safety. <clears throat> he one of them players that as soon as he get to another team with a better defense, you'll see that because he, he had a shit ton of value. The only problem with – I don't even think he is as terrible in coverage as some people think he is. I think that's accentuated, though, when you play on teams that can't really score. They play on a team that can score now, so it's, it is pretty wild that the defense still can't stop nothing. Now, the Seahawks defense usually get it going towards the back end of the season. So we'll see if that uh, con that trait continues or that trend continues. But right now, I would pick the Seahawks to beat the Rams in a game, whether it be in Seattle or L.A., because the Rams just cannot score on the road, at home. It don't matter. They look like an offense that just do not know what the fuck to do right now. And that's why you lose to Micah Parsons and the Cowboys. When Aaron Donald give you a great game, the defense give you a great game. They keep you in this game far longer than an average defense keeps the teams in a game. And you st it, it say something that they hold a Cowboys team to 22. <clears throat> it ain't like they went out there and let the Saints score 39 fucking points. 
The Cowboys scored 22 points. And the Rams offense could only muster up 10. You got Stafford giving the ball away uh, every other drive, it feel like. Like, right now, the Rams have a problem. Now, I always talk about how the Rams don't have a good enough run game. They need to go out and make a trade. And I really don't understand not going out and trading for Christian McCaffrey, especially when we talk about the Panthers in a little bit. I don't understand not going out and making a trade for Christian McCaffrey. And it feels like they might end up losing out on Christian McCaffrey to the Buffalo Bills. Because the Buffalo Bills, the two teams that I would imagine would go at, would be able to take that risk on a Christian McCaffrey. Because if he hits, that would be that would change the team is Buffalo and the Rams. If Buffalo get Christian McCaffrey and Christian McCaffrey ball out, that that's a Super Bowl winning. That 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 team can get to a Super Bowl because all the Bills need is a consistent run game. If Christian McCaffrey can stay healthy for the Buffalo Bills throughout an entire playoff run, not only do that give you a legitimate running back now, he can catch better than any running back out of the backfield. And unlike Chris, unlike what I be talking about with uh, Austin Eckler, Christian McCaffrey can actually be a legitimate running back who you give. Now, the injuries might not allow you to use him like he used to be, but if he, Christian McCaffrey can actually carry the run game. Um, to me, people look at him and Austin Eckler and they're like, well, they're kind of the same player. Well, they actually not, because while Austin Eckler can do all the things, I mean, while Christian McCaffrey can do all the things Eckler can do, Eckler can't do all the things that Christian McCaffrey can do. And one of the greatest assets in Christian McCaffrey is that he can actually be a legitimate number one running back that carries the load for you. That is not Austin Eckler on a week to week basis. And so the Rams, why they haven't went out and tried to make a trade for Christian McCaffrey? No clue, um, especially when you could have got him for the cheap to start the season, most most likely, or in the off season, when he coming off another injury riddled season, uh, another injury riddled season. But hey, all I know is this constantly throwing at the Cooper Cup's not working. When you can't throw it to him no more, you just throw it to Higby. Uh, I can't even think of uh, uh, the other dude, the fullback's name, who they continuously throw the ball to, like. The Rams offense looks terrible. Sean McVay keep trying to run it, but they can't run the ball. They don't have good enough running backs. Henderson's not good enough. Uh, I don't know what the fuck done happened at Acres. The offensive line can't defend Matt, can't protect Matt Stafford. They don't open up running lanes for the running backs. Uh, Matthew Stafford, when he do got times, not making the greatest of decisions. The receivers ain't getting the separation that you need them to get to consistently move the ball up and down the field. The entire fucking offense is a mess. And if Odell Beckham signed back with this team, that would be shocking. Because if I'm O, hey, this is not the same offense that it was last year. It's just not. And I think that Allen Robinson signing, boy, they're going to regret that one for a little minute. Because you can say fuck draft picks when you're making smart decisions. The Allen Robinson, boy. You're going to be looking back at that one saying we could have got Von Miller back and we could have possibly brought O back with the money we used to give to uh, what a dude who is yet to produce in any type of level for us. Like the Rams are in a (laughs) the Rams in a tough spot. And I'm interested to see if Aaron if they can pull this thing together, because if they don't, that is a good shot that Aaron Donald will be retiring get seasons in Falcons and the Bucks. 15-20. 15-20. Let me run through the scores real fast. I didn't even mean to spend that much time on that game. Uh, Falcons-Bucks. Damn, man, because I'm going to spend a lot of time on this Falcons-Bucks game. Falcons-Bucks ended up 15-21. The Falcons went into the Bucks. They lost that game. Controversial call at the towards the end of that game. Lions went into... Nah, we taking our time because I got to say something about both of these fucking games. So the, the Falcons went into um, Tampa Bay. They lose 15-21. Tom Brady had a good game. He threw, I mean, it was one of them games where uh, a lot of yards, not a lot of t- uh, scoring, really. Every possession kind of mattered. The Falcons got back in this game once you thought that the uh, Patriots, I mean the Patriots, the Bucks was going to blow it open. The big thing in this game was the third down call towards the end of this game. Grady Jarrett gets a sack on Tom Brady, and they call roughing in the passer on Grady Jarrett for throwing the quarterback down. And that's been a pro, and that basically 
so after that, the Falcons never got the ball back. Basically, they was the Bucks was allowed to run. They were able to run the clock out basically because of that play. The week before, Jerome Boger made that call. The week before that, the Ravens and the Ravens Bills game on a, a critical down in the game on a drive that the uh, Bills used to win the game. Jerome Boger made. Uh, um, roughing in the passer penalty, he called that one in that game on a play that just should not have been a pass. I mean, a roughing in the passer. They extended a drive and ultimately led to a win by uh, the Bills. Uh, it ain't the only thing that caused them to win that game, but it was a big. It played a big part. And then you had last night on um, Monday Night Football another roughing in the passer penalty call that uh, could have fucked the Chiefs. <laughs> that one was crazy because. Derek Carr didn't even have a ball anymore. But I guess it wasn't as crazy when you think about it because, I mean, it kind of still was because that was technically, it shouldn't have been roughing the passer after that ball was taken out of his hand because from that point on, it's a fumble. And it's already been recovered by Chris Jones. But I guess if, like, say Derek Carr throw an interception, right, and somebody come and crack him in the back uh, on the interception return, I can see them calling roughing in the passer right there, but would that would that be a roughing in the passer that leads to 15 penalty, a 15 yarder on the uh, like you you don't get the ball back, but the the offense that's coming out now got to move back 15 yards. Like, is that how that would have worked, or is it like oh, okay, no, you don't get the interception now, they get the ball back because of, I can't remember how that worked. Um, either way. You know, people talking about that's what led to the Bucks winning that game. Tom Brady's response to this was hilarious to me because it was basically like, bro, the fuck y'all want me to do, bro? I don't throw the fucking flags, yo. Like, y'all mad at me like I'm the one out here throwing the flags. I don't throw the flags, all right? Period. Like, y'all could be as mad as you want to. I don't throw the fucking flags. It is what it is, and I get that, but I... <sighs> Yeah, the NFL do definitely got to do something about this call. Because I, I think the call right now, for one, is 15 fucking yards. And I get it. If they go low on a quarterback or something, like I get it. If it's legit to go high in the helmet area, I get that. Some of these tackles that they call in, I mean, these sacks, they call a roughing in the pass. It just don't make sense. I don't think the Grady Jarrett one was a roughing in the pass a call. I don't think the uh, Josh Allen one was a roughing in the pass a call. They call roughing in the passer on um, the shit Chris Jones uh, happened to Chris Jones. I saw Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes get slung down on sacks. Neither one of them was called passing the I mean, was called roughing in the passer. I don't think either one was roughing in the passer, but it's the fact that they called them for other dudes and didn't call them for these two. For one, I already think they officiate rushing quarterbacks far different than they officiate. Uh, other quarterbacks but then i feel like they give brady they definitely give brady uh seniority calls and shit like that but i really don't like how they referee some dudes it's like the referees get to decide who get calls and who don't that's why i say it all the time man i hate refs i pray that the nfl refs don't become as bad as the nba refs and that they don't or lord only knows that they become as bad as them damn nba i mean those uh college basketball coaches but i mean referees bro them motherfuckers is terrible there's a reason i don't watch college basketball no more bro them fucking refs it's like they pay, they think they paid to go out there and just blow whistles left and right i can't st- bro after they fucked that carolina championship win we had up with just blowing the whistle left and right i said bro i'll never watch another college basketball game like and that was obviously a lot because I still watch Carolina even though <laughs> I don't. Um, when I do catch a game, it's like all right, I fuck it, I call the game. But most of the time, I'm watching my college basketball team through the stat uh app. That not even the stat app through the scorekeeping app uh like Fox Sports or some shit or ESPN or some shit like ESPN take up too much room on your phone, especially for an app that I'm never gonna use to watch nothing on. Uh, Cause I don't watch them month. I was gonna say something, <laughs> but listen, the next game. Cause I'm making this shit longer than it's supposed to be. The Lions, the Pats. Obviously, I took the Lions to win this game, and obviously they fucking lost zero to twenty nine in New England. 
the Patriot, the Patriots, the Patriots working with a third string uh, quarterback. And of course, the Lions offense has been ripping the Patriots. I mean, has been ripping the league all year. Decided to play like absolute dog shit. No surprise there. Josh, J, Jared Goff looked like regular Jared Goff. So I can't really be too irritated by what I saw. But, you know, I'm just like, damn, bro. I didn't pick the Lions in back-to-back weeks. They, the offense played like shit in both weeks. I picked them because of the offense. They And they were going in against a team that didn't score the way they scored this year. So now I'm just confused on what the fuck is going on in uh, Detroit, bro. Like, if we're going to be – if you're going to suck, that's cool. But at least actually have a good offense all throughout the year. Now, maybe next week they go back to scoring a whole bunch of points when I pick against them. Maybe that's how that shit going to work. But if you're going to suck but show me some type of consistency, at least actually have a good offense that and you just really suck on defense on a week to week so that people can be like, man, oh, the Lions will be this if they defense wasn't so. I can't even say that right now because the fucking offense scores zero points. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? But anyways, we go to the Bears and the Vikings. It's not going to take me too long on this game because I didn't watch this game. 22-29, I did see that the Vikings was up big early and they let the Bears back in it. I expect nothing less from a Vikings team because, like I said, I've watched enough Vikings games to understand. Kirk Cousins, for some fucking reason, throughout the majority of a game, whether it be the beginning or the end, the middle, it don't matter. He going to play as if he does not know what the fuck he's doing. They're going to play hella safe as if they don't have Thielen, Justin Jefferson, uh, Cook, and all these other weapons that most teams don't have. Like, it's it's a mystery as to how the Vikings consistently are not a top five offense, but they have top five talent. So, it's, it's weird, uh, but yeah, the Vikings end up winning that game. And I think that's like the Vikings' fourth win on the season. We already talked about Cowboys, Rams. Cowboys win that 22-10 with the great game by Mike Parsons, too, who was limping at the end, still came in, made big plays. Eagles, Cardinals. The Eagles end up winning this game 20-17. to The Cardinals missed a field goal that could have tied this game at the end, but the Cardinals also made a comeback in this game. And I'm seeing a lot of people who are uh, talking about, like, oh, the Eagles is not a good 5-0, blah, blah, blah. Uh, for one, I understand what people say when they say stuff like that. But this is the thing. So I watched the Steelers. You remember like two or three years ago, the Steelers had that crazy record to start the season. And then like towards the back end, they didn't win another game and they lost in the playoffs to the Browns. That was a team that I understood people saying that's not really as good a team as they records say. Like a lot of teams is blowing games and that's why they. So I get it. This Eagles team is not that same team. The Eagles have had great wins. They've looked good. Just I think it's something about people not understanding that NFL games are closer than on a normal basis. Like it's not blowouts on a weekly basis. Like and what you want is your quarterback to be able to play in these grinded out gritty games. And so I for some reason I guess NFL fans is just not used to uh, or they act as if they're not used to seeing these teams play competitive, gritty, you know, grind it out, find a way to win type games. And when teams win those games, for some reason, it's always, oh, well, you know what, this and that. Listen, every week not going to be, be a great week. Every week is his own week. The Eagles are a great team, though. I, I don't understand the, you know, the, the I hope what the, what's happening with the Eagles is they not like peaking too early. That's what I hope. Because I have seen teams do what the Eagles do right doing right now and end up peaking too early. But that was a great win by the Eagles. Y'all know I love Jalen Hurts. He is him to me. Now, Jalen Hurts only got four passing touchdowns on the season. Now, I've seen people make a big deal out of that. My counter to that is, why does that matter when they are 5-0? I mean, that would not matter if they were losing if he was still producing. If that four touchdown without any other production was there and they were losing, then, yeah, we could make a problem about it. Like, oh, he not producing enough. But like I said, bro, it's when people want to see it done a certain type of way, they just don't care about all that he does for an offense. And when you look at the complete level and plus it's not he out there throwing for like 300 yards a week just because he can't get it in and because they use their legs when they get to the end zone. It's like a big problem. And what's crazy is. They a better passing team than they are a running team. 
you take Jalen Hurts rushing yards out of this team's uh, rushing uh, stats, and this is just an average rushing team, the Eagles actually could be better. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to trade for Christian McCaffrey. Because Christian McCaffrey on the Eagles would be disgusting also. But the Eagles do end up winning that game. The Giants and the Packers. Boy, boy, boy. The London game, the 930 game. 27-22 comeback win for the Giants. They shut out the Packers in the second half of this game. Everybody, you know, of course, panicking every time Aaron Rodgers lose a game. Uh, but I'm not shocked. Uh I guess I am a little bit shocked that they lost this game. But I did say that this would be a competitive game in the um my picks. And it's because the Packers offense just not good to me. Like they can survive for just so long off of having two great running backs who one of them should have been traded by now to a team that need them. Um, but this offense to me is just not consistently good enough. They don't consistently move the ball down the field. Aaron Rodgers can dink and dunk and slant his way through a couple drives to make it look nice. But when the defense finally settled down, the Packers offense usually looked like it don't know what the fuck to do to beat the opposing team's defense. And on a weekly basis at this point, the Packers make every damn defense look great. It's really hard to judge any team's defense when they play the Packers because the Packers offense is so bad at times. They make every defense look like an above average defense. But. I don't understand why the Packers haven't went out and tried to trade for DJ Moore or Robbie Anderson. It feel like those are two players, one of which would make either one would make a phenomenal addition. I think a DJ Moore is a smart pick for them because I think a Baltimore is the type of team that need to go for Robbie Anderson. DJ Moore would make a perfect sense <clears throat> for Aaron Rodgers. So I'm not really sure why they haven't made that because I listen, Randall Cobb looked decent this year. He not he not changing life for him. Alan Lazard is not consistent enough. Like. And some people be like, well, they let uh, Valdez Scantley walk. Valdez is a uh, I receiver. He ain't really doing nothing special in Kansas City. He wasn't doing nothing special in uh, Green Bay. So I think the biggest thing was letting the. Uh, Devonte walk see people talk about how the Raiders suck right now how they got a bad record and so Devonte clearly missed Aaron Moore okay that's interesting um obviously Aaron is a better quarterback than uh than um uh Carr but winning is not going to be held against um Devonte Adams like it will be held against Aaron Rodgers <laughs> that's just a fact so it's not and Devonte is going to get his numbers. He ain't playing with somebody. Now, I did see this stat where it's like Devonte caught 74 percent of the catches he had with Aaron Rodgers and 54 percent of his targets he catch with uh, Carr. So that is a, a, a ungodly drop off. But uh, listen, Devonte Adams will be fine. I don't understand. Like I do understand why he made that decision um, to go play in Vegas because Vegas didn't look like a bad team going into the season. I guarantee you if Vegas had a different coach, they'd be better right now. I'm I'm standing strong. I told y'all all offseason, before the offseason, Josh McDaniels is not a good head coach. Why he is a top candidate on so many people's uh, things is amazing to me because it's no way. People talk about his offense. Oh, he a great offensive play caller. Motherfucker had Tom Brady. He didn't turn Tom Brady into nothing better than Tom Brady was already on the trajectory to be. But I saw Brian Dayball change life for the fucking um, Josh Allen, who came into the league not looking like Josh Allen look now. No coincidence that the fucking Giants look like a well-coached team. They don't look like they have a great quarterback. They look like they got a fucking great coach who know how to work around that quarterback, much like Kevin Stefanski knew how to work around Baker Midfield. I'm telling you, they, coaches matter, but the Raiders, uh, that's not what I was telling you. Coaches do matter. But what I'm telling you is, I think Aaron Rodgers needs Devontae more than Devontae needs Aaron Rodgers, because Devontae going to be fine regardless. 
Aaron Rodgers, if he still want to win a Super Bowl, he ain't got a lot of time left. He 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 getting up there in age now. And listen, I'm looking at the Raiders offense, and while it don't look like the greatest offense in the world, Devontae's still going to end up getting his numbers by seasons in. He'll be fine. Aaron Rodgers, Devontae missed the playoffs. Yeah, he'll be mad because he's usually in the playoffs, but like I said, he'll be fine. Aaron Rodgers missed the playoffs or don't do anything in the playoffs once again. That's just more and more talk people adding on to his legacy. And right now, the offense looked like he could really use a fucking Devontae Adams. And listen, they offered him the money to bring him back. So like I said, at the end of the day, you can't really put it on the organization. So, hey, it is what it is. But the Packers need to go out there and find a motherfucking receiver because this offense is not a Super Bowl winning offense. This is an offense that to me, if they make the playoffs, they will probably be a one and done. Because I can see every single defense that make the playoffs being too much for this offense. They can barely put up 20 points, it feel like, on a weekly basis. But that's just my thoughts. The Titans head to Washington to take on the Commanders or the Commodores, as Pat McAfee would say. And the Titans win 21-17. Did not watch that game. But I heard, I did see Ron Rivera's remarks uh, about the quarterback thing. Steelers get absolutely blasted. 3 to 38. Kenny Picks had another pick, but Kenny Pick also Shaq Lawson, I think is his name, uh tackled him low or whatever. And he his reaction is hilarious. Y'all got to go see that. That shit was funny. Go look at Kenny Pickett Shaq Lawson. Chargers win 30 to 28 in um Cleveland. Almost lost this game because of coaching decisions by um, their head coach. I'm going to talk about head coaching decisions towards the end of this video, if I remember. The Dolphins end up getting blasted 17-40 by the Jets. Texans and the Jags play, and they the Texans finally get their first win of the season, winning 13-6. I started off watching this game. This was the first game I was watching. Some people might look at that score. For the longest in this game, the score was lower than that. And some people might look at the score and be like, man, this must be a terrible game to watch. But, you know, sometimes you'll be like, oh, no, actually, the defense is playing insane. And so, no, 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 no. The, that game was as terrible as the score indicated. So the 49ers end up blasting the Panthers 37-15 in Carolina. The Bengals losing uh, Baltimore 17-19. And, of course, the Raiders, we talked about them. They lost to the Chiefs in Kansas City 29-30. So. That is the scores from week five. I want to talk about Matt Rule in that Panther situation, but I will probably do that on a separate video because we already done hit the time that I wanted to get to. But I appreciate y'all for joining me on this episode of Kicking It With Saint. Part two, we will talk about Matt Rule and the Carolina Panthers. Tell somebody you fuck with them. Tell somebody you love them, man. Saint out. Yesterday's price is not today's price, Ravens. Mm. What you thought you were going to have to pay him, you're going to have to pay him more. I got the moves like hot sauce. Little mama taking the top off. I'm laying down getting topped off. After this, she know she getting knocked off. I know she loving the money, so I keep on thumbing and thumbing. She says she horny when she's taking shots, so I keep them coming and coming. Now I'm putting dick in the tummy. Scoop her up like I'm raking the sums. You would think shawty red track, the way that she running and running. You getting dumber and dumber, you out here chasing the bone. After she finished from giving me dome, the Uber is taking her home. <laughs> <laughs> Tight. Tight.